a seven-year-old boy presented with fever and pain on the face and was diagnosed to have a viral infection of the parotid gland, mumps. Which of the following nerves is responsible for transmitting painful sensations from the skin and fascia overlying the parotid gland? Let's verify the options. The first option is the facial nerve. The facial nerve leaves the stylomastoid foramen and enters the substance of the parotid gland. This is where the parotid gland is located. It is just below the auricle of the ear, over the angle of the mandible, and a little bit overlies the masseter muscle. And you can see here that the facial nerve enters the parotid gland and divides into a network of nerves called pes and serenus, and this network leaves the parotid gland as groups of nerves such as the temporal, zygomatic branches, buccal, mandibular, and cervical branches. These branches and the network of nerves that is present in the parotid gland, they are motor. They are motor to the muscles of facial expression and has nothing to do with the sensory innervation of the parotid fascia or the skin overlying the parotid gland. The facial nerve carries some sensory fibers from a small area of the auricle, but not from the parotid gland. The other option, the auriculotemporal nerve, this is a branch of the mandibular nerve. It passes posteriorly, medial to the neck of the mandible, and again it enters the substance of the parotid gland. As its name indicates, auriculotemporal, it supplies the auricle external acoustic meatus part of the or the superficial part of the tympanic membrane so it is auriculo and temporal it supplies the skin over the temporal region it is also sensory for the temporomandibular joint so it doesn't supply the skin over the parotid gland or the fascia of the parotid gland in addition to that it carries secretomotor fibers from the otic ganglion which is connected to the mandibular nerve. And these parasympathetic fibers, they supply the parotid gland, but they supply the parotid gland with secretomotor fibers. They are not sensory. So auriculotemporal nerve is not involved in transmitting painful sensations from the skin and fascia over the parotid gland. The other option, the lesser petrosal nerve. The lesser petrosal nerve is a branch from the tympanic plexus of the middle ear. It leaves the middle ear and perforates the petrous part of the temporal bone in the middle cranial fossa and then leaves the middle cranial fossa through foramen ovale where it synapses in the otic ganglion. It carries preganglionic fibers, preganglionic parasympathetic fibers that originate from the glossopharyngeal nerve. These fibers, when they relay in the otic ganglion, the postganglionic fibers will be carried by the auriculotemporal nerve and reach the parotid gland. But again, these fibers are scretomotor and not sensory. The other option, the corda tympani, this is a branch of the facial nerve. Before the facial nerve here leaves the stylomastoid foramen, it gives the corda tympani that passes into the middle ear cavity and then leaves the middle ear cavity through the petrotympanic fissure to the infratemporal fossa where it joins the lingual nerve. And the corda tympani carries scretomotor fibers for the sublingual and submandibular salivary glands, and also it carries taste fibers from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. It has nothing to do with sensations from the parotid gland. The great auricular nerve, this is a branch from the cervical plexus, as you can see. It leaves the cervical plexus behind the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. You can see these are the four cutaneous branches of the cervical plexus, the lesser occipital, the great auricular, the transverse cervical, and the supraclavicular nerves. The great auricular nerve extends upwards and anteriorly, and it supplies the skin and fascia over the parotid gland. In fact, this is the only part of the face that is not supplied by the trigeminal nerve. It's only the area of skin that covers the parotid gland and the 
angle of the mandible whose sensation is carried by the great auricular nerve.